Welcome to the Everymaker. My name is Nick, and today we're making babies. Toys. Don't get too excited. It's not that kind of show. Today we're going to make a baby gym, which is basically like an A-frame on both sides of the bar in between. That way the baby can start exercising soon and you know, like do pull-ups and, and what? They, they, don't, they don't do pull-ups? Well then what do they do? Nothing? They just lay there? Man, babies are lazy. I'm starting this project with S4S oak. What is S4S? It's lumber that has been sited on all four sides so the two faces are parallel and the two sides are parallel. This is typically what you purchase from the big box stores, but it comes at a premium since all the dimensioning has already been done for you. That doesn't necessarily mean that the lumber is perfectly straight as it will likely shift and twist as the moisture levels change. With this project though, I'm not worried about a slight bow, especially since we're cutting the boards way down. I'm starting by cutting the boards to rough length. I'm making three baby gyms because one of my friends is adopting a baby and another one is having twins. Once all the boards are cut, I sort them to match the colors as best as possible. I mark the center of the board four inches down from the top. This is where I will drill the hole for the dowel. When batching out projects, it's best to create kind of an assembly line. Doing each step in sequence really saves time. There are two boards on each side. The first board gets drilled halfway through using a Forstner bit that's the same size as the dowel. The second board gets a hole drilled all the way through. When all the holes are drilled, we switch to a regular bit that is slightly larger than the hanger bolt we will be using. And then finish drilling out the holes in all the outside pieces. While the drill press is set up, I grabbed a piece of scrap and drilled halfway through with the Forstner bit, and the rest of the way through with a regular drill bit that's just smaller than the hanger bolt. Now comes the complicated bit. The A-frames will be held together with a piece of rope, and I needed to drill a hole at an angle so that the rope would lie flat when it's open. I picked 30 degrees because that's what I figured would look good. I used a lot of scraps and a lot of clamps to make sure I could get the exact same angle every time and drill a straight hole through the boards. My bit wasn't quite long enough though at this angle, so I had to finish it off with a slightly longer drill bit in my hand drill. But with the hole already established, the bit would just follow the hole the rest of the way through. I needed to round over all the corners and oak is a fairly hard wood, so sanding wasn't gonna work. I used my router to give a quarter inch round over on all sides except for the bottom, being careful not to let the guide bearing hit the holes for the rope. I cleaned up all the edges with a bit of hand sanding and could really start to see everything shaping up. It was time to cut the angles for the feet. I used my table saw on the fence to make sure everything was square to the table and measured down from the edge of my saw to get the height that I wanted. I bought this digital bevel guide for this project and I'm super happy that I did. I set my miter gauge to get the right angle and lined it up with the blade. I used a small stop block on the fence so that the offcut wouldn't get caught between the fence and the blade. It's important to check the piece you're cutting to make sure that you're cutting in line with the hole you drilled. The hole and the bottom of the foot should be parallel. On to the pull-up bars, uh, I mean the dowels. I cut the dowels to the width I wanted them, plus three widths of the board. Two boards will go completely onto the dowel, and the other two boards are going halfway onto the dowel, so one plus one plus half plus half equals math. I also cut two one-inch sections of the dowel to hold the boards in place and screw onto the hanger bolts. And here is where that scrap board from earlier comes into play. It's no longer scrap, it's a jig. To start, I put the dowel ends in the hole and push a brad point bit from the other side. The bit has a point in the end, giving a nice center hole mark for the dowel. 
Then I drilled a hole in the ends of the dowel, just smaller than the nut for the hanger bolt. Then used a regular bit to drill deeper, leaving room inside for the hanger bolt to extend past the bolt. This quarter inch chisel was just about perfect to turn that nice round hole into a hexagon so the nut could fit nice and tight. A little bit of super glue helps ensure that nut will not fall out. I used an extra hanger bolt so I could hold the dowel ends of my drill and then shaped and smoothed them with a piece of sandpaper. The main dowel body gets a hanger bolt, but first it needs a hole pre-drilled. I used the jig once again to line up the hand drill with the dowel to make sure that it stayed nice and straight. I jammed two nuts onto the hanger bolt, gave it a quick tap with a hammer, and screwed the bolt into place. This project was a collaboration with my wife. Mainly, she designed it, I built it, except for the dangly boppers. She used a combination of wood and silicone for the hanging bits. She started with the ring and tied on a nylon string. Then it was just a matter of adding on different silicone and wood beads and anything else that strikes her fancy. The silicone beads were a little more difficult to put on than the wood ones. She used a toothpick to push the string through the bead. We used a combination of high contrast beads, which helps stimulate eye coordination and focus in babies. She checked with the tape measure until she had enough beads, then tied on another ring for the top of the dangly bopper to slide onto the dowel. She fed the string for the last bead. This helps keep them from falling apart if the knot slips a little bit, and also does a pretty good job of hiding those knots. And I think they came out awesome. I wanted to finish the wood with something I knew would be safe for the babies. I made up my own paste wax with jojoba oil and beeswax. It was really easy and it gave the wood an awesome feel and finish. Once applied, I let it dry and then buffed it out with a paper towel. The last step is the rope that holds it all together. I used my table saw fence and clamped a board to the other side to hold the A-frame in place and level while I fed the rope through. A simple knot is all it takes. Cut the rope to length and tie the other side and you are done. The baby gym packs down flat, but can be set up in minutes. Start with the dowel and take off the ends. Then feed the inner board onto the dowel, making sure that the angled feet are opposite so they lay flat when it's open. Slide the hanger bolt through the center hole on the outside board and place on the dowel nut. Now slide on all the dangly boppers and repeat on the other side. I am just over the moon thrilled with this project. I love the way it came out from making my own paste wax as a wood finish, so I know exactly what went into it. Uh, completely non-toxic, perfectly safe for the babies, and mm, it smells so good. Uh, definitely gonna be using this again in the future. Uh, to making these little dangly boppers with my wife, and yes, that is the official term. Um, they've got these silicone beads and these wooden beads that can be used as teething rings, so these can be taken off and used for that. If they break, they can be replaced, um, you can also put on uh, like stuffed animals and other things to hang from this, but I love the way this looks. 
I would love to get your guys' feedback, so leave me a comment down below and let me know what you thought of it. If you like this project or you like the video, hit that like button for me. It really does mean a lot and help my video get a little bit more reach. If you guys want to stick around and see what's coming up on the Everymaker, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And if you want to make one of these, I go for it. I would love to have you guys make these. Make sure that you tag me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, whatever you guys use at The Everymaker and put in hashtag The Everymaker so I can see what you guys come up with. And I'll see you guys again real soon.